Okay. Hello. I love you. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you this morning. Um, got a couple of announcements. Thanks to Glenda for being our lay leader today. And also remember that Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. Okay? Anybody else have any announcements? One more thing. For those of you who did not come here Friday to the recital, Greg set up another one. We want one a month. Um, it was almost like the three tenors. It was that good. Um, it really was. Uh, and it was such a blessing uh, to uh, have Greg and his friends uh, sing and the young lady who played. Uh, it was really special. So uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to do that again because it was really, really neat. Okay, let's prepare for worship with our prelude.
we're gathered to worship. How wonderful are the works of God. In wisdom he made all things it is full of God's creatures. The ocean is also filled with life, both great and small. All of these look to God to give them their food in due season. When God gives it, they gather it up and are filled with good things. When he hides his face, they are dismayed. When God sends forth his spirit, they are created. His breath brings life to them all. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise God all my days. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May the Lord Let's pray. Gracious God, we praise your name and we thank you for your generous love. We call on you today and ask that you would help us seek the blessings which endure all the way to eternal life. Help us open our hearts to your presence and our minds to the messages that you have for us. And we give you thanks that we are constantly being renewed by the winds of your spirit. We pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. First hymn is He is Exalted. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Pass the peace of Christ to one another. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord with all our hearts in the company of those who do right in the congregation of God's people. How amazing are the works of our God. They are treasured by all who love and serve him. 
Everything God does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. All God does is just and good, and his commandments are trustworthy. They are forever true to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. God has paid a full ransom for his people, guaranteeing his covenant with them forever. Our God is an awesome God. Reverence for the Lord, for the Lord is where true wisdom begins, and the rewards of wisdom come to all who obey him. Are you guys again? So today I thought we'd talk about prayer. Do you pray a lot? Sometimes. Sometimes and yeah. I do too. When I first wake up in the morning, I sing that song we sing in Sunday school. Thank you, Lord, for this fine day. Yeah, because I'm thankful. I'm thankful I woke up. Do you ever thank God you woke up and thank him for your day? Yeah. Do you have a hard time talking to God when you pray? Yeah, a lot of people do. Sometimes it just flows out, and other times it's hard. But I'm going to teach you a super easy way. It's a little trick. Okay? I'll show you. So you bow your head. Well, you, right now we're going to look with our eyes open. I'm sorry. Okay, so what do you see first? Your thumb is the closest to you? You see your thumb closest to you? So when you see your thumb when you're praying, you thank God for all the people who are close to you in your life. Who's close to you? Um, our mom and our dad. Our mom and our dad. Who else? Our grandma. Your grandma. Okay. So that's what you can do. When you see your thumb, it's closest to you. That's the people you pray for who are closest to you. Your family, usually. Okay, what about your pointer finger? It's next. Your pointer finger, you can pray for the people who point you in the right direction. Do you think I point you in the right direction? Hope so. What about Pastor Craig? Yeah. What about your teachers at school? Okay, so people who help you go in the right direction, they point you forward. So we'll remember them when we pray. Okay, what about the, the, the tallest one right there? You see that? What? Middle finger. Middle finger. Okay, we're going to call it tall one. It's really high. That's for the people high up from us. Do you know who that might be? God and Jesus are always at the top of the list. Okay, what about political leaders? People who run our town? They're leaders. They need prayers. People in our town that are leaders, like maybe city council, mayor, the president of the United States is a big one. He needs a lot of prayers. He's above everything up there. Governors, mayors, people who are in charge of things. They're leaders because they're, they're high up. Okay, the next one, the ring finger. Have you ever heard that's the weakest finger on your whole body, of all your fingers? Yeah. I always heard you could ask someone who plays the piano if that's the weakest. You think Mr. David could tell us? <laughs> Mr. David, is that the weakest finger? Yes, it 
Oh, you're right. Good thing, or that would have messed up my sermon here. So the weakest finger is where we pray for the sick. That's very important. The sick who are weak, we pray for them. And the last one, what's that called? Pinky. Pinky or? Baby finger. <laughs> the baby finger is pretty important, that little pinky there, because we don't ever want to be bigger, think that we're bigger and better than somebody else, do we? Because we're not. We're always a small little fry, no matter how big we are. Even if we're the president, we're a small little fry. The only person that's really big is God. So, so when we see our baby finger, we need to pray for ourselves. And sometimes pray for our attitudes, get them back in check. But mainly ourselves. We're important, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes. Okay, let's, that's how you do. So from now on, when you pray at night or in the morning or at school, when you have that moment of silence at school, and if you don't, can't think of anything to, to say to God, it's always good to thank him for things first. Then you can go through that list, okay? You think you can remember it? We'll go over it a few times. Okay, let's bow our heads and say a prayer. Loving God, loving God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for our church family. For our leaders. For our leaders. For people who are sick. For people who are sick. For ourselves. For ourselves. And thank you for loving us. And thank you for loving us. And teaching us to pray. And teaching us to pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's now honor God as we bless our gifts and our offerings.
Let's pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for your love. We thank you for your presence in our lives. And we thank you for the many blessings you've showered upon us. And Lord, we just pray as you continue to bless us that we might bless others in your name. And we just ask that you continue to bless all that we do and to bless all the people we reach out to in your name. We pray this all for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn is You Are My All in All. Please be seated. I have a couple of uh, prayer requests in addition to those who are on the prayer list. Uh, this is from Meredith. Uh, Mandy Smith, mother of two small boys. She's in MD Anderson sick from chemo. Third time she's had cancer. Uh, and Sandy Bean, uh, you know, Sandy wasn't feeling too well last week. And, she came in here this past week and she was still kind of wobbly, so she decided to stay home and rest today, so we need to keep Sandy in our prayers. Any other concerns? Yes, ma'am. Pray for Liz to have patience. She still has to keep that right leg stiff, and that's probably what the problem is, yeah. So continue to pray for Liz. Anything else? Yes. Bye. Joy. Thank you, Philip, for being here. Any other joys? Yes. 55th wedding anniversary. <laughs> And Noah lived to tell about it, huh? There you go. Okay. Okay. Keep praying for Noah. Any other joys or concerns? Good to see Donna back. I have a joy. I shot my age on the golf course yesterday. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It was, as I explained to my older brother, who's a golfer, it was an out-of-body experience because I haven't shot in the 60s in a long, long, long time. So it was fun. Probably won't happen again anytime soon, but it was fun while it lasted. Okay, as always, I invite you, if you are so inclined, 
hold on to somebody close to you while we pray. Let's pray. Gracious God, we worship you as one who has given us life, and we ask that you would help us to live it to the fullest. At home, may we be the friends and neighbors that we really want to be and need to be. Help us to spread the warmth of your love to everybody we meet. At work, may we be reliable and honest in what we do and friendly to those who find things hard. Help us to always give our best, to work to our fullest, and never ever be ashamed. In our games, help us to play hard, but play fair. Help us to win without boasting and lose without making excuses. Lord, may we be strong in character, loving in our relationships, forgiving when others fail us, and loyal. May our lives be useful to others and at the same time be fulfilling to us. We pray for healing and wholeness for those we pray for. The list is long, Lord, and we've added a couple today. So be with all these folks in a very special way. And we give you thanks for anniversaries, for birthdays, and other great events that keep us moving forward in this life. Lord, in all things and in everything, please be with us. Help us to widen our knowledge, deepen our love, and strengthen our service. We ask you to hear all our prayers in the name of the one who taught us to pray to you together, our Savior Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me.
We need God's wisdom and understanding. And we ask him to open our ears, O oh God, that we may hear your word speaking to us in this moment. Open our ears, O oh God, that we might listen for your voice calling to us through scripture. Open our hearts, O oh God, that we might enter into the love that you offer us. Amen. This is the reading from God's word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let him, them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created. Thank you, Glenda. We're starting a sermon series today called Touching Heaven, and it'll be about prayer. I don't know if you've made all your travel plans for this summer, but I ran across something that might change your itinerary. If you go anywhere near Nisswa, Minnesota, you can drop in on the Wednesday evening Nisswa turtle races. People from Nisswa and surrounding communities all gather at a designated parking lot for the weekly races. It's big excitement, it's big business. Vendors sell turtles and turtle accessories, whatever those are. And fans bring their long chairs early so they get a good seat. In a race last summer, there were 435 turtles competing in 15 heats over the six foot long course. When Biff, the turtle announcer, shouts go, the crowd goes into a frenzy. People shout, jump, and cheer their favorite turtle on the victory. And after all the heats are run, they have a championship race. When the winning turtle is determined, the winning trainer collects a $5 grand prize and a championship turtle necklace. And the normally reserved folks of northern Minnesota go wild again. Isn't it amazing what gets people excited? Sporting events? I'm not sure turtle races count as a sport, but sports in general are really good candidates for excitement. Well, we have something to be excited about today, and that's the good news of Jesus. We're talking about praise, and we have many things to praise God for today. So let me share with you four reasons we're touching heaven through the prayer of praise today. We're excited today because God is God. God is awesome, God is glorious and worthy of our praise, and God is able to do all things. And you know, I've noticed something as I've gotten older. There are some things that I can't do as well as I used to. Small things like see, hear, and move. I remember back when we were in seminary, I tried to play softball. It was students against another team. It had been a few years since I'd played softball once. I was really pretty good. Our game that day was a new experience in pain and embarrassment for me. The first time I batted, I hit one to the left center field wall. I rounded first base. I started to stumble as I reached second base. And I thought to myself, make this look good, slide. Unfortunately, when I hit the ground, I did the slide, I kind of plopped. Fortunately, I was close enough to second base to crawl the rest of the way. When we took the field, they told me to play shortstop. One of the first batters hit a pop fly in my direction. I went back and I stumbled again. The next thing I remember was the umpire standing over me saying, great catch, are you okay? Apparently, I'd caught the ball and lost consciousness for a few moments when my head hit the ground. The morning after the softball game, I was sure 
I had contracted a deadly form of virus. Every muscle in my body ached and what little hair I had left hurt. I couldn't understand why a little softball would make me feel that way. I used to be able to do it and do it well. Well, the good news today is that our God is always able. His power and might do not diminish with age. God was, is, and always will be God. Our God is able and worthy to be praised. And I love the way King David sings God praises in our scripture text today from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 10 through 13. Listen to God's word. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, are the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and on the earth are yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Riches and honor come to you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and it is in your hand to make great and give strength to all. And now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is our song of praise, and it's simply because God is God. To the end of Scripture, to the end of time, for all eternity in heaven, we will praise God. Go all the way to the book of Revelation, and you'll hear the saints in heaven singing the same song. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders, the numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, and all that is in them singing, to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. What a song of praise. What a great God we have. Secondly, we praise God for the world. God's the creator of the universe. He made the world and all that's in it. He deserves our praise. Like King David sang in Psalm 8, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are humans that you are mindful of them, mortals, that you care for them? No scientific, no technological advance of humanity can come close to the creative power of God. There's a story about a group of scientists that got together one day and decided they didn't need God anymore. Their knowledge and technology were so advanced, they felt they could simply do away with the Almighty. So they appointed one of their group to go talk to God and give him this news. The scientist approached the throne of grace and said, God, we've decided we no longer need you. We can clone people. Why don't you just retire and go away? Well, God listened patiently, and then he said, very well, how about this? Let's have a human-making contest. And the scientist replied, okay, great. God said, now we're going to do this just like I did back in the beginning when I made Adam. Scientist said, no problem. And he reached down and he grabbed a handful of dirt. God looked at the scientist and said, oh, no. You go get your own dirt. <laughs> Only God can create. And I think sometimes we forget to praise him for that. We take this world for granted, and we lose our sense of awe and wonder. What if we could recapture an appreciation for the world God has given us to celebrate the glory and grandeur of what God made for us? Wouldn't that bring our hearts to praise? The great poet William Blake wrote, To see a world in a grain of sand, and heaven in a wildflower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand, and eternity in an hour. Praise God for the world he created, 
and then praise God for the relationship we have with him. Isn't it great that God, the creator of the whole universe, is someone we can get to know? He is not just a divine, unmoved mover, a metaphysical first cause, an existential ground of being. God is not a philosophical principle. God is the most high, a supernatural, spiritual person, and he knows you and me. And what's even more important is that God loves you and me with an everlasting love. That's really good news in a world where we're starved for real, authentic relationships. Comedian Jerry Steinfeld noticed that the complexity of modern relationships is reflected in the fact that greeting card companies are putting out cards that are real pretty on the outside, but they're blank on the inside. Nothing. No message at all. Jerry says, it's like the card companies are saying, we give up, you think of something to say. For five bucks, it's not worth us getting involved. The good news is this. God wants to be involved with us. He made us to be in relationship with him. And our relationship with God is built on praise. One of King David's greatest psalms says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We praise God because we belong to God. He's our shepherd, and he loves his sheep. I like the way Bill Hybels put it in his book, The God You're Looking For. Bill writes, take a deep breath so you can catch the full force of this next statement. Are you ready? Here it is. The God you're looking for is head over heels in love with you. Bill continues, let me give you some more soul-warming news. His affection for you is bound in who he is, not in what you do. So his affection for you will never wane. Because of that love, God wants to walk with you today, and he'll want to walk with you tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that, throughout eternity. And when we truly walk with God throughout our day, life slowly starts to fall into place. I'm not saying that life will go perfectly or even smoothly, but I am saying that we'll gradually experience life in all its fullness. I think Bill's on to something here. The love of God and life in all its fullness is a really good reason to, to praise. And then finally, we praise God today for our hope of heaven. That's the ultimate victory. That's the great equalizer. That's the balance that outweighs all the burdens of life. It is the final answer to all of our problems. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may also be. We have a hope of a better place in this world. It's called heaven, and we will live there forever with God and Jesus. There was a story not too long ago about two teenagers in Chicago who wanted to prove their love for each other and show their disdain for all the trouble in the world. They went to the top of a six-story building, kissed each other, and jumped off. They left a note that said, we're looking for a better place. The girl died, and the boy was seriously injured. If we want a better place today, we don't need to jump off any buildings. God already has a better place for you. In fact, this life is a better place when you live in hope and love. And heaven is a better place for those who live and die faithfully. When we find our world to be full of troubles, trials, and tribulations, we know that we still have a home waiting for us in heaven. It's not made with human hands, but with the hands of a loving and eternal God. So this slight momentary affliction we call life is preparing us to assume the eternal weight of glory that God has prepared for us, and we praise him for it. 
That's the power of praise. When your strength starts to fail, your abilities seem to weaken, remember that God is able, full of power and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing, and praise him. When the whole world seems like a gloomy place, it feels like everything is turned against you, look at a tree or look up into the sky. Watch a bird in flight. And remember, this world belongs to God. God made it, and it is worthy of praise. When your human relationships are difficult, you've been hurt or betrayed, remember that God not only made you, he knows you, and he will love you forever. God won't betray you, and he will never, ever let you go. So praise him. When the problems mount up and death stares you in the face, and you feel the pain of grief, remember your hope of heaven. God has made a home just for you, and his kingdom will not be complete until you get there. Praise him for his salvation. I hope you can see that finding these reasons to praise God will give you power to survive the daily struggles of life. I read a story about a trio of whales that were trapped in the ice off Point Barrow, Alaska a few years ago. The world watched as these three gray whales appeared, battered and bloodied, gasping for air through a hole in the ice. Their only hope was to somehow be transported five miles past this ice mass out to the open sea. Rescuers begin cutting a string of breathing holes about 20 yards apart in the ice, and the ice was about six inches thick. For eight days, they coaxed the whales from one hole to the next, mile after mile. Along the way, one of the whales disappeared. But finally, with the help of some ice-breaking ships, two of the whales swam to freedom. Worship, praise, and prayer are the breathing holes that allow us to survive under the ice mass of our troubles. Battered, bloodied, and bruised by this world, we come to church, we kneel down to pray, we lift our hearts in praise. And it's like we're coming up for air. We breathe in the power of the Holy Spirit and we find strength, encouragement, comfort, everlasting love, and eternal life. The ice is shattered and you're touching heaven. So let's close with an ice-breaking act of praise today. This is loosely based on Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise God for his wonderful creation. Praise God for our relationship of love. Praise God for our hope of heaven. God is God, there is no other. Our God is God, praise his name. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So please stand and join Glenda as we affirm our faith using the words from the Shorter Catechism. What does the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer teach us? The conclusion of the Lord's Prayer, which is, Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It teaches us to take the encouragement in the prayer of God. And in our prayers to praise Him, ascribing kingdom, power, and glory to Him. And in testimony of our desire, an assurance to be heard. We say, Amen. Our final hymn is How Great Thou Art.
Please be sure and stay with us for a time of food and fellowship in the fellowship hall. Go in peace, love, and care for one another in the name of our Savior Jesus. And remember, our God is an awesome God. Amen.